Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another review. This time, I'm going to take a look at Tome of Beasts from Kobold Press. A third-party monster supplement for 5th edition. It's available in hardback and as a PDF. The suggested price is $49.99 US for the hardback and $29.99 for the PDF. The hardcover has around 430 pages, including an introduction, the bulk of the monster entries themselves, an appendix with, a P- with NPCs, and an appendix of NPC features, an index of monsters by challenge rating, and the required open gaming license. There's some really solid names involved with this product, with Chris Harris, Dan Dillon, Rodrigo Garcia Carmona, and Wolfgang Barr listed as authors, and Steve Winter as developer. The product is, quite simply, a list of over 400 new monsters and a smattering of NPCs for 5th edition. It's really huge. Look at this thing. It is thick. And it dwarfs not only the other monster book I reviewed previously, but all the other 5th edition books I currently own. Once again, I won't be able to cover all of the individual monsters, but I will take a look at some standouts, as well as examine the quality, of, whether the quality of the monsters holds out throughout the entire book. If you're interested in a list of all of the included monsters, the table of contents is available in the preview on RPG Now. So if you want more information regarding that, you can swing by the link I'll put in the description below and check the preview out. But first, let's take a look at the physical details. Physically, the book is really high quality. It's a sturdy, four-color cover with a nice finish and an excellent binding. The interior pages are relatively sturdy paper stock with full-color printing. I'm no expert on printing, despite having been around it for most of my life. I used to work at an ad agency and so forth. But whereas I would usually simply say whether a product is adequate or not, the physical construction of this book gives me a great deal of confidence that this will last quite some time, and it seems like it will stand up well to heavy use. Individually, the monster entries are, again, close to the format used in the core 5th edition products, and uh, it's got a dis- they've got descriptive blurbs, a few paragraphs of background and lore information under creature-specific headers, then a block of abilities. Each Creature also comes with a full cover, de- or full color depiction. So I will uh, do this. I don't know if it, if I can catch it up. This is kind of format that you're looking at, very similar to what's in the Monster Man. There are occasional sidebars telling of information specific to the Midgard campaign setting, which is another D, de- uh, which is another uh, Kobold Press product. Tome of Beast uses the revised open gaming license in its SRD for 5th edition, and thus the terminology used in, in the monster write-ups is very close to the current standard, and many of these write-ups wouldn't be out of place in an actual Wizards of the Coast product. So, the production values are excellent, the formatting is what you would expect of a core product, where does that leave the actual contents? <sighs> well, I gotta admit, it's a bit of a mixed bag. There's none that are really poorly written per se, but the creativity and utility of the creatures within varies. Still, with as many creatures as are listed within, there's actually a fairly good chance that a particular DM will find cause to use a fair number of them in their game. The creatures themselves range from challenge rating 1 8th to a CR of 20, with the highest being a demon lord at CR 27. There's no included list of creatures by type, which is a serious oversight. However, it does seem that there's quite a few fey in comparison to the normal, uh, normal, uh, the normal division, and a couple other monster types are really overrepresented, whereas others are really underrepresented. As for the origins of the creatures within, it's a mix of creatures called from prior works uh, by Kobold Press, converted to fifth edition, and then some new creations, with a scattering of Kickstarter backer creations. Although the art is nice, for the older creations, some of it was taken from prior Kobold Press products, and so they'll be familiar to fans of those products. One of the problems that I have with the creature types in this book is there's a number of redundancies. Some creatures are, while technically different, similar enough in concept and abilities that they probably could have been covered as variations of one another. There's also a distinct lack of entire categories of monster, with a heavy focus on others, as I suggested earlier. Now, that's not to say that the creatures in here are useless by any means. With the sheer number of creatures presented in this book, more than in the core monster manual, in fact, there's going to be some for every taste in here. There's even more than a few that might fit in in well with the old-school dungeon style that I personally prefer. So those veterans that are sometimes looking for the 
you know, let's let's admit it. Sometimes the the older editions were pretty damn goofy. If you're a veteran of the older edition and you're looking for something like that, yeah, there's some in here that'll work. There's also some oddities in selection. There's not much in here that was taken from existing existing mythologies, and what there there are in here are really weirdly selected. For instance, there's a few Cthulhu mythos-based things, such as the Deep Ones, the Star Spawn of Cthulhu, I think even the Shoggoth, but not not the actual big hitters themselves or any of the major old ones. There's the Archdevil Mammon, for instance, but none of the other mythological ones. I don't know that they're oversights per se, and I'm glad for what classic monsters of myth that there are in here, but they just seem a little bit sparse. So just a quick rundown of some of these creatures in here that I found interesting. There's the Bone Swarm, which is a swarm of reanimated bones treated as one creature. There is a large number of clockwork creatures, as well as dragons and drakes, including the Void Dragon, which just seems to take the idea of over-the-top encounters to a step beyond. The Gnarljack is an animated bear trap that really kind of brings to mind the Chain Chomps from Super Mario Bros., while the Horde Golem strikes me as, me as something really suitably old school to unleash on an unsuspecting group. It's basically a golem that looks like a horde, a horde of treasure. Uh, there's only a few NPC types in the Villain Codex appendix, but I could see them all having use in uh, a number of campaigns. And despite being called the Villain Codex, not all of them are actually evil. And you could use them as ordinary NPCs in a pinch. So given the excellent production value and the variety of creatures, what's my take on it? Well, keep in mind that I do favor old-school-style dungeon crawls and similar sorts of adventures. With that said, I see a large number of creatures that I'd actually like to use in my game. But mostly, it's just because of the sheer number of creatures within. The various monsters described in this book seem to reflect a more modern design principle than, say, 5th edition foes, which I've covered before. And while that's all right and wonderful for most people, I found a larger percentage of said 5th edition foes book, for instance, more applicable to my particular needs, even though there were less monsters overall. Still, I'm glad that I picked it up. There's a number of creature types in here that are comparable to the ones in the core monster manual, yet different enough that they can be substituted in to give players a nasty surprise. But for a DM with a more modern style of game, I can easily see them using a larger number of the creatures in this book than I would. Just a quick note for adventure designers, the Tome of Beasts does use the 5th edition open gaming license, and the open gaming content declaration up front is very simple. Things like proper names, dialogue, plot, story elements, characters, artwork, graphics, sidebars, and trade dress are all considered product identity and therefore you can't use them. So presumably some someone can actually use the monster's themselves, it says names, descriptions, monster statistics, and monster abilities, those are all open content. So if you supposedly can use these in your own project, just as long as you take out references to Midgard and get new art. Pretty simple all in all. So, you know, I'm going to get some use out of it. Maybe not as much as some would, but enough to make it worth my while at least. It's a pretty and a durable book, I'll give it that. So I'm going to go ahead and put it on my shelf, and it'll likely be hit from time to time as I pull it out for adventure ideas. If you're interested, I'll put links in the description below where you can get the PDF and then the hard copy itself. And I'll leave it at that. For now, this has been the RPG Crawler with my review of Tome of Beasts. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like, comment if you've got feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content. If you want to help support my content, I do have a Patreon account, the link of which can be accessed below or at the end of this video. Until next time, take care and... Goodbye.